This is the DIY Artist Route Podcast, a journey into what it takes to take your music or creative project to the right people, build your tribe of super fans, and growth farm for real, lasting success. I'm D. Grant Smith. Thanks for joining me. Today, we are joined by a seasoned professional who works outside of the creative industries. Michael Zapersky is the founder and owner of Consulting Success, the Marketing Consulting Services Authority. Michael is a coach to business and entrepreneurial coaches, and he's amazing at it. Wait, why would I bring a non-creative industries person, a non-musician, onto an artistic podcast? It's simple. Michael is one of the best in the world at helping other people get better at what they do. He will teach you and I how he's made connections with media like the Huffington Post to get published and specific steps that you can take to get your work out in ways that a PR or publicist is supposed to do, but better. He will give us some specific steps to take on our path to reach big success today, coming up in one minute. First, this DIY Artist Drop podcast is brought to you by Bandzoogle, built for musicians, by musicians. Bandzoogle makes it easy to build a beautiful website for your music. Their step-by-step system will get you online in minutes. You can choose from hundreds of mobile-friendly themes and then customize your design with Bandzoogle's easy point-and-click editor. Plus, all the features you need for a professional website are already built in. Sell your music and your merch online commission-free straight from your website. Build your fan list and send professional newsletters using their mailing list tool. Pull in content from all of your online services, including Twitter, Instagram, and SoundCloud, and get live support from their musician-friendly team seven days a week. Plans start at just $10 a month, including free registration of your own custom domain. Go to bandzoogle.com and try it for free for 30 days and use the promo code DIYPOD to get 15% off the first year of any Banzoogle subscription. Once again, Banzoogle.com, use the promo code D-I-Y-P-O-D. Well, my friend and fellow traveler, one of the best ways to learn how to grow is to expand our minds and expand our hearts so that we can receive insights from people who are doing similar things to what we want to do, but they're doing it in a different field. Trust me, nothing stymies our progress than being closed-minded and saying, oh, I can't learn from you because you don't work in the music field. Non-musicians teach us great things every single day. Michael Zapersky works primarily with consultants and coaches in the business realm, but I have been following his blog and his email for years, and he has helped me grow in tremendous ways. He is an outstanding person, and he is excellent at helping people grow because he sees how to implement structures in place to make growth easier and faster. He's also a big proponent and a great example of the power of working one-on-one with a coach. And since that's also what I do with musicians and creative entrepreneurs like you, getting his insights into why it's important for us to work with coaches is something that will also greatly help you grow. More on this in our journey today. Are you ready to get started? Good. Lace up those shoes and let's hit the DIY artist route. All right, Michael, uh, so good to have you on the DIY Artist Podcast, man. Welcome. Yeah, thanks so much. Pleasure to be here. Uh, you, you, you're somebody that I've been following uh, for a long time because uh, you, do, you do consulting with consultants, and I would put consulting and coaching and mentoring in, a, in kind of a similar box. Uh, but you've got a lot of experience in business growth, marketing, helping people build their tribes. Uh, can you give us a little bit of your background and what it is that you do? Yeah, sure. Uh, I've been building successful consulting businesses now for over 17 years. Uh, and at Consulting Success, which is consultingsuccess.com, uh, we work with consultants all around the world in all different industries really to help them to, to grow their consulting businesses in a sustainable and profitable way uh, through establishing marketing systems and processes that allow them to consistently attract their ideal clients uh, and also increase their fees by focusing uh, on ROI positioning and uh, communicating greater value with everything that they do and those that they serve. 
So you've made, for 17 years, you made a conscious decision to help other people win. What is it that drives your pursuit of helping others? It feels good. <laughs> Just that simple. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, we can go back, uh, in, ter- in terms of how it all began. You know, I started, uh, consulting success with my cousin and business partner, Sam, um, you know, many years ago now, really as a way to, to just share kind of stories from the trenches. Uh, you know, I've built consulting businesses in North America, in Asia, work with clients all around the world. And it was really a place to, to share articles and ideas of what was working, but also what wasn't working because consulting can be, a quite, you know, a lonely place for many people and especially for independent consultants. And the idea really just took off. Um, I think it, it really resonated with a lot of people. And so over the years, we've always just been focused on f- finding ways to add more value and to help others. Um, you know, we've been very fortunate to have a lot of success in what we do, both our companies and, um, and the clients that we've worked with and the caliber of those clients. And so it's just naturally transition to a place where uh, we're able to to serve and help others because we know what it's like to go through when you start a business and then when you're building the business and when you're you know scaling it up uh, so we've kind of worked through all of those different um, you know stages of business growth as a consulting business and for myself it's really all about you know I get the most satisfaction um, helping our clients to, to get results you know it's great to make money but what I find to be much more rewarding is helping our clients to, to see results in their own lives and whether that's, you know, landing clients, growing their income, uh, or even just, you know, an accomplishment for, for me, that's much more rewarding. Awesome. Awesome. Well, helping people grow is, uh, is a big passion of mine too. So I think that's another, uh, like attracts like, so, so that's, that's really awesome. Uh, you kind of answered this a little bit, but if you can, if there's something else to, that you could add to it, or if this strikes a, a, a certain note, but what is the, what is the thing that gets you the most excited to work every day? So right back to it, right? Helping our clients to, to achieve results. So we run a coaching program for consultants. It's called the Accelerator Coaching Program. And in the last 18 months alone, uh, clients that have gone through a consultant that have gone through the program, they've added about uh, 5.86 million. It's probably closer to 5.8 million um, uh, or 5.88 million, I think now last count, in new clients, you know, in new revenues. Um, that's, that's really exciting. So, you know, just finding ways to serve our clients, to make our coaching program better and better and better, um, so that we can help our clients to see greater and greater results is really what drives us. I think now hearing you say it, that really makes a lot of sense as to, uh, the big thing that I want to talk with you about, which is this really great blog article that, uh, that Michael wrote, um, called uh, five tips to get published in industry publications. And um, I'm on your I'm on your email list, so I, I saw it in email first, and then as I was reading this, I was like, "Holy cow! It's like <laughs> it's like you've taken pages of the DIY Musicians Radio Handbook and and translated it over into a different industry." And I know you didn't do that. You have your experience, and you've been doing this, and you've been doing this for longer than I have. But the thing that's really struck the note for me was I talk a lot about how growth and connection is really about connecting with human beings and it doesn't matter what industry you're in if you if you follow the principles it's all applicable in the same ways and so uh will you share with us just a little bit of insight into um into this article and into what your methodology is behind uh reaching out to uh people to to improve your brand but but the process itself yeah, definitely. I mean, I'll, I'll first say that I think there's a lot of people out there that have much more experience than than I do in the whole you know world um, of publicity and and gaining press. My experience over the years has you know been to have my work featured uh, in places like the Huffington Post or Marketing Profs or HR Executive, um, Fox News, you know, Marketing Magazine, and a whole bunch of others. Uh, and so that's really where the article came in was to share with, with others, my experience. But again, I think there's a lot of people out there that that have a lot more experience and this is, you know, their expertise. Um, so, you know, with, with that said, as you kind of mentioned here, do you it's really about relationships. You know, the business of consulting is all about relationships. And I, I believe that really every aspect of business 
uh, really comes down to relationships and whether that's, you know, a relationship with your email subscribers, it's relationship with people that attend your webinars, it's relationships with people that you might meet at conferences, whatever it is, it's really comes down to that relationship. And so the approach and kind of methodology that, uh, that I've always found to be effective is to start rather than just pitching articles or rather than just, you know, trying to respond to some sort of PR inquiry that might be out there on, on the web. Uh, if you can establish a bit of a relationship first with uh, an editor, with a, a writer, with a reporter, uh, you tend to see a much greater response and, and much more um, interest from their side in terms of featuring or having you write for their publications. So that, that's really what it, you know, what it comes down to. I've seen a lot of consultants that think about getting their articles published and they just seem to kind of send almost what turns out to be kind of a, you know, a spam or an email that looks like spam to <laughs> an editor uh, just saying, hey, you know, here's what I'd like to do for you. But they don't really, they don't try and establish uh, a relationship. Uh, and they also don't really seem to focus on how they can add value. You know, they forget that when you're approaching someone to build a relationship, it shouldn't be about about you and what you what you want to gain or what the you know what benefit you want to see, but rather how can you help this publication or how can you help this blogger or how can you help this person and what kind of value can you bring and then even beyond that, I would say it's what unique value can you bring right why are you so well mm. suited why are you the right person to write that article or to get on a radio interview or whatever it might be right what's what's your story in a concise you know, kind of summarized manner that you can share with them that's going to pique their interest enough and, and prove to them that you really are that expert in the area that, that you say that you are. And that's right on. So the <laughs> I laughed when you said spam because that happens every day, all day in, in the position that I'm in and in the, in the position that, that many of my colleagues are in, um, in, in radio. And so mm-hmm. You know, in the same ways that these these you know media uh, editors and, and and publications get the same thing of here's this article I have put it on your platform is it's the exact same thing that, that we get here here's my music uh, mm-hmm. here just here it is and <laughs> don't no 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 experience with with the the platform that they're reaching out to in the first place so. Um, can, can you kind of walk us through what that process looks like? You're talking about adding unique value and focusing on bringing that value to the place that you're trying to get to get uh, your 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 article on. So from from your perspective, this is about you know writing an article to get put on a um, a, a big publication to help build the brand, and that's the benefit that you get out of it. But the benefit that the publication gets is really unique content. But what does that process look like? Yeah, I mean, so the process that I outlined in that article that you mentioned there um, around the five, you know, kind of five tips to get published in industry publications. Number one is don't pitch, right? It's mm. kind of what I was alluding to, you know, go in to build a relationship, um, you know, identify who the right people are for you to be speaking with. Number two is then to provide value to them. So, you know, you can certainly go in, and I have in many instances and written one email crafted it the right way and landed the opportunity to to write for that publication to be featured in it. But for those that are just getting started, and especially if you don't have a lot of work that you can reference that you've done before uh, that is relevant, then a really great approach is to contact you know that editor or that that blogger and provide some value to them, right? Comment on something that they've written or talked about before, share with them maybe another article, could be yours or could be someone else's that you think could add additional value or provide a different viewpoint. Really what you want to do is instead of going in saying, hey, here's my work, please feature it, uh, you know, approach them by saying, hey, really enjoyed your article or really enjoyed your piece on this and um, here's something else that you might consider uh, or this reminded me of you know this other article, and I thought that you might appreciate that, right? So you're positioning yourself as an expert that you have knowledge about something that they may not know about, or that you're just really in line, and you're kind of aligning yourself to to what they care most about. Step number three is really once you know you start doing that, I would always suggest to people like create a, a target list, and you could probably move this step up in the process, but I always find that you know once you kind of start to work through this. It, you can really hone in and get clear on, let's say, 10 or 20 kind of top publications to contact. Uh, too often, I find, and this is true for marketing as well, 
that people just kind of start doing things, but they don't really have a good plan behind it. And so actually spending, you know, 10, 20 minutes if it takes you, or maybe even a bit longer to create a list of, of publications or radio stations, you know, for maybe some of your listeners or whatever the medium is, but make a list of the, of the people and the channels and so forth that you want to reach out to, because then you can really consistently like work through that list, not just off the cuff and thinking of a few people, maybe forgetting them or forgetting the follow up, but actually have a list that you can work from and just, you know, one by one, work through it, schedule a follow up and so forth. Uh, step number four is to reach out, right, to actually contact them. And again, it's always great to start that um, that initial outreach by telling them how much you enjoy their work or comment on a piece that, um, you know, that they've written. Same way, DeGran, in terms of how you reached out to me was to say, hey, you know, Michael, you published this, this article on five tips to get published in industry publications, really enjoyed it, you know, been following your work for a while. Uh, I do this podcast and, I'd, you know, I'd love to have you on it. That resonated with me, whereas, you know, every day we get tons of people inquiring, just saying things like, hey, you know, we can write articles for you, or hey, we can, you know, get you ranked in, you know, SEO, even though we have 50,000 monthly visitors and probably no more than they do about that. But, you know, we get all this kind of stuff, but your message stood out because you actually took the time to make it relevant. Um, that's really, you know, really critical um, and a, a really, I guess, an important step for people to consider. And then the fifth step here is really what I call continuous outreach, right? So you can go in and you can use that initial outreach in step four to just say, hey, here's how I can help you. Um, like here's, you know, I've read your article, really love it. Um, I've written for these other publications. I'd love to also write for yours. Uh, this is my background. You can certainly do that and it can work really well if you have enough background to support that. But if you don't, then I would suggest taking a little bit of a longer term approach to this. And then step five is that continuous outreach. So you may have sent an article to them that isn't even yours. Uh, you may have provided some, some other opinion or some resource to them, some research and so forth. Well, the whole idea here now is to continue doing that. And as you do that, maybe one more time or two more times, right, you comment on articles that, that they've written, you add some additional value, then you're in a really good position to say, hey, you know, I've been reading a lot of your articles. I've really enjoyed them. I'm thinking about writing an article on this topic right here. Is that something that you guys would like? Or I'm, you know, I've just launched this new whatever product or program or, you know, song or whatever that I think you and your listeners or your readers might enjoy. Would you be interested in that? Once, you know, you've established that relationship by all those touch points, then you are in a much better position to actually extend an offer because they know you. And they've started to, you know, build familiarity with you. It's not like you're just making a cold pitch out of the blue, which is what so many people do. Yeah. And I see a lot of people also just using services, right, to try and it's like a service to go out and kind of spam and make all these offers for you. But that's why they often don't work very well is because they haven't taken the time to build that relationship. I'm so glad you brought that up, man, because there is so much of an automated and there's so many marketing people that are trying to sell this automated relationship building platform. It's, it's bull <laughs> and it doesn't work. Um, but, but yes, be, being very intentional and very personal and making that one-to-one -one connection. So, so important. Thank you so much for, for the, the steps and the insight into that, because your method and what you are, what you are talking about doing is the exact same method that I have with uh, with my book and with, with my radio course, which is all about how to get radio airplay, and it walks you through this. I've got a couple more steps than you do, <laughs> but I mean, it's it's I, I think it's just absolutely awesome that when it comes down to building success, it doesn't matter what industry you're in or what, what field of work you're in, the steps and the methods are the same because it does come down to valuing other people and caring about who they are and what they do and wanting to be a part of their team instead of just wanting to promote yourself and pitch yourself. Um, why, or, or let's see, uh, with that in mind, you talked a minute ago about having a list of people and so you're not just contacting a bunch of random folks and you mentioned follow-up. And the, one of the things that I see a lot is the follow-up is actually one of the main ingredients that gets missed sometimes. Why is follow-up so important? Because most people don't follow up and that's why most people aren't successful. Um, you know, you look at the, there's a lot of statistics out there and a very popular one shows that in marketing and, you know, in making a sale and in this case, making a sale or kind of winning 
what you want, right? Reaching your goal is to get airtime or is to get published and so forth. You know, that often requires five to seven touches. And the vast majority, over 80% of people, stop before, you know, getting to the third or fourth touch. And so what that means is that if people would have just continued a little bit longer, if they wouldn't have given up so soon, they would have been successful, right? Like 80% of the effect of the impact actually comes from those later touch points, but most people don't do them and they stop too early and they wonder why it's not working. They question and say, well, you know, well, guess what I'm doing here? I've taken the wrong approach and they just go off to the next shiny object and try some something else or some new technology and the same thing happens over and over again. But having that commitment to, you know, I started something, I'm going to keep working through it just because someone isn't responding to me right now doesn't mean they won't respond to me later, right? We're not talking about spam, we're talking about providing value here, which is important. Uh, but then to continually be in touch w- with them uh, is so important. And this is, again, you know, in all aspects of, of life, I would say, but certainly uh, when it comes to getting published or gaining visibility or even winning clients, uh, that ongoing outreach. I mean, we've had clients who became clients literally after years of being, you know, following our our work. Others sign up right away. But the whole idea is that you want to make sure that you have a system and process in place, a way to track your follow-up so that those opportunities don't fall through the cracks. Mm, Right on, man. And I can say uh, testimony for me too. Uh, Every every piece of my growth has come from a relationship. So Mm -hmm. right on. Um, what would you say? We're, we've talked a lot about building value and about about growth through relationships, and a lot of that has to do with branding. Um, and you've done a great job of that for years and years and years. What would you say is the number one thing that you've done to build your brand over time? Consistency, commitment. Um, you know, there's many different ways to look at a brand, right? A personal brand or a, a business brand. There's the visual component of it. Um, and that, that side of it, definitely I give, you know, all of the, the credit, uh, to, to Sam, my cousin business partner, cause he handles all of our design and, you know, the visual side of, of what we do in our, our businesses. Um, but in terms of, you know, really what, what the brand has become known for, uh, I would say that the brand is where it is now because of our commitment. I mean, we you know we've published over 900 articles on consulting success over the years. We've done, you know, countless webinars and trainings and, you know, spoken at a lot of different associations and keynotes and organizations and so forth. You know, all that happens because we're committed to, to our mission. We're committed to, um, to this vision and goal that we continually, you know, update and and work towards, but it comes from not stopping. Right. So, uh, the brand, you know, someone's just kind of sitting at home and they think, yeah, I want to build my brand and they write one article or they try and get on, you know, one interview um, and then they come up against some resistance and they stop that, well, then your brand isn't going to be built. But if you're committed to excellence, if you're committed to making a mark, if you're committed to reaching a goal, and you know that nothing's going to stop you and you're prepared that there will be challenges along the way, you, and you keep working through them and you find resources and people that can help you to overcome the challenges that you have, uh, then your brand will get known because you will be out there. It's like you know, a lot of people want to, to gain more visibility and exposure, yet they don't do anything that's going to help them to, to do that, right? They're not getting on the radar of their ideal clients or on the radar of, you know, the media outlets that they want to get featured in. Uh, they kind of have these plans. They have these documents that they're working through. So they're thinking and planning and, th- and you know, they have it in their mind, but they're not actually getting out of the building. So they're spending time a lot of, you know, a lot of time building things, but not actually getting out of the building and getting in front of the people that, that matter that it will uh, allow them to really be seen and being seen, having that visibility, that exposure and the consistency behind it, I think is really what, what has built our brand and really what builds the brands of, of all organizations. Awesome. Awesome. One more question for you, man. Uh, what is one piece of advice that you have for gaining success today for entrepreneurs and creative folks alike? Yeah, it's a hard, hard question to answer in terms of, you know, just one. I think there's, there's many, uh, lessons that, that are learned over, you know, years of building businesses. Uh, I think one that is often kind of an, an underappreciated, but really is the, one of the big keys to success for every, you know, successful person that, that I know. Um, and probably every successful person that's, that's out there. And, you know, you look at whether it's musical artists, you know, grandmaster chess players, 
uh, athletes, actors, you know, so on and so forth, they all have a mentor or a coach. Um, the most successful people don't try and reinvent the wheel themselves. What they do is they find where they need help. Uh, they find what's holding them back and then they look to, to identify who is where I want to be, who can I learn from to get me to that next level. Um, and they go to that person and they get that help. And that's really what allows them to, to fast track their success. Uh, so I would say that's probably one of the biggest keys. Awesome. Awesome. Michael, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for continuing to do stuff that matters and for continuing to be remarkable for so long and uh, making your commitment to helping other people like it. It's really powerful and I really appreciate you. Yeah, thanks, D. Grant. Michael Zapersky is the founder of Consulting Success, helping business consultants reach more people through better coaching. Follow him and subscribe to his fantastic email newsletter at consultingsuccess.com. Michael talked about a lot of really awesome things, but in particular, he gave us five steps to get your work in front of media like the Huffington Post and radio. And he also told the story of how he and I connected because I took the time to make a personal connection with him. I want to show you how you can do this over and over again with music media, online media, and other industry influencers so that industry pros are talking about you. I will show you everything in the Indie Radio Promotion course, the only educational and experiential platform that actually teaches you how to get your music on the radio. Seriously, I'll show you a step-by-step process to get your music on the radio, build your network of station contacts, get your work in front of industry professionals, and a whole lot more. And you'll get a free digital version of the DIY Musicians Radio Handbook with the course. Sign up right now at dgrantsmith.com slash indie radio course. As you know, our badass theme song comes from my good buddy, Timothy Palmer. It's called Tryin' and it's found on his Half Boy EP. Go pick it up right now on iTunes. Our short conversation with Michael was amazing, wasn't it? It changed things for you, I know, because even though I've been following Michael for years, he still taught me new stuff in this chat. So go do your part right now to help someone else grow. Tell someone you know about this podcast. Tell them about Michael Zapersky and tell them about the one big takeaway that you got from this episode. Whether you're listening on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, my website, or anywhere else, share the link with someone that you love today. And while you're at it, go ahead and give them your love too. As you know, that is the biggest and most important thing that we can give to anybody every single day. It's what makes every single person's heart garden grow. Thanks for doing that. Join in the growth farming with me by following me at dgrantsmith.com. I've got a lot of tips, insights, and personal connection to help you build your audience and grow at exponential levels. We'll pick this up one more time with a new journeyman to teach us even more about how to grow as artists, creative entrepreneurs, and yes, even business folks. Be uncommon this week, my friend, and keep growth farming. I'm D. Grant Smith. I'll see you next time right here on the DIY Artist Route Podcast.